Welcome Eastwood Church. What a glorious day. The sun is shining. Hopefully the last of our snowy weather is gone. Uh, what a surprise. We've had some interesting uh, weather in the last few days, but uh, we are still walking with the Lord, trusting Him, and uh, finding in Him all of our soul's delight. Our church-wide focus over the last week has been um, looking for some way that we can be uh, uh, have a ministry to others, serving others, doing some act of kindness for them. Now, uh, this week, uh, we would like you to publicly encourage your neighborhood by uh, putting a, a sign in your window, perhaps a verse or some words of encouragement. Uh, perhaps find a, a new way to show Christ to your neighbors that we haven't thought of and share it either on our YouTube page or on our Facebook page. We'd love to see how you, you are showing Christ to your neighborhood. So may God help us and bless us as we seek to be salt and light to our community. Our hymn for the day is uh, Ye Servants of God, um, speaking of the glories of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim, and publish abroad his wonderful name. The name, all victorious, of Jesus extol. His kingdom is glorious and rules over all. God ruleth on high, almighty to save. And still he is nigh, his presence we have. The great congregation his triumph shall sing, ascribing salvation to Jesus our King. Salvation to God, who sits on the throne. Let all cry aloud and honor the Son. The praises of Jesus the angels proclaim. Fall down on their faces and worship the Lamb. Then let us adore and give him his right, all glory and power and wisdom and might, all honor and blessing with angels above and thanks never ceasing for infinite love. Oh, brothers and sisters, what... A great privilege we have to be called sons and daughters of our God. Uh, and may that be our encouragement. No matter what our circumstances may be, let us remember that we are children of the King. And we are simply passing through this life and we are on our way to an eternity with our God, to rule with Him. What a, an amazing prospect we have and how that should encourage us in our thinking in the midst of any troubles or trials that we may be going through at this time. Our verse for the day is 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that may that be our attitude, that we might always be growing, always maturing, knowing more and more of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ each day. And then the verse concludes with, To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. And hopefully you can say uh, with the writer, with Peter, Amen. May that happen soon. Our passage uh, that we're looking at for our devotions today is James chapter 1, verses 9 and following. And uh, if all goes well, we'll go to verse 12. Uh, but let's start reading at verse 1, and we'll read up until, um, uh, right, right to the end of verse 12. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the, of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways." Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation, because, like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. 
Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. And now, Lord, as we look into your word, uh, how we pray that you would speak to us. Lord, as we draw near to you, we pray that you would draw near to us, that you would speak to us, that you would encourage us, that you would give to us whatever we need as we come to your word. Lord, we hunger and thirst for you. We want to know more of you. We want to grow and mature in our walk with you. And so, our Father, we ask that you will help us and sustain us and work in us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, verse 9. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation. Now, in these verses, we see both the rich and the poor. Now, the poor man here is told to boast in his exaltation. And this word uh, refers to pride in a privilege or a possession. And this is a legitimate pride. This is not a sinful pride. So, although this individual has little in this world, uh, he can rejoice in his spiritual standing before God by grace and the hope which that brings. And he's also looking forward and remembering and keeping in mind that uh, he is headed for glory. He's going to receive the crown of righteousness. God is going to bless him. And he's going to experience wonderful um, promises fulfilled as he uh, lives with his Lord and Savior. Then in verse 10, we have a move uh, to the rich man and the rich in his humiliation, because, like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. So, uh, where, the rich, uh, where the poor man might uh, look at himself and despair because of his poverty, uh, he is encouraged to remember the great gift that he's been given. And the rich, who might be tempted to take pride in his wealth, is uh, advised to remember that that those, those riches are soon going to pass away. He's going to leave them all behind. So uh, this, re this reverse in verse 10 refers to the rich believers being brought low by trials, the troubles and trials of this life. And these experiences help him rejoice and realize that genuine happiness and contentment depend on the true riches of God's grace, not earthly wealth. Now, as you and I read this, uh, there are two things that we have to keep in mind. First of all, our first temptation is to compare ourselves with others here in Canada. So I might look at myself and compare myself to someone else who has much more than I do and think that I am poor. And someone uh, uh, might do that with me. Somebody might have less than I do and compare themselves to me and think that I'm rich and they're poor. And so, um, and then on the other hand, uh, we can look at, say, our brothers and sisters who live in countries where uh, they have much, much less than we do. They might look at any of us, even the poor uh, in Canada, live like kings compared to them. So we need to keep these things in mind, how careful we need to be not to compare ourselves with others. That's not the purpose of these two verses. Um, we need to look at our own situation. And if you are feeling like you are financially pressed and you're in need and you're discouraged or dismayed because of your situation, James' counsel to you is to remember that you're a child of God. And as a child of God, he has promised to meet all of your needs. He's going to care for you. He's going to watch over you. Uh, he may not make you rich. That may, may not be his purpose for you. But you're going to be, he wants you to be, any, any Christian can be rich in grace. And find that no matter what our circumstances are, we can be joyful and happy. And then on the other hand, the rich. Oh, how careful the rich need to be. That, uh, we do, that they do not set their hearts on those things. What a great danger this is. It's a danger in our culture. It's a danger for all of us, brothers and sisters, that we can start trusting in our things. And that's where our confidence lies, instead of in him alone. And this is also one of the reasons why God gives us trials. Those trials 
make us or make us see or remind us that these things are not what make us happy. You know, when you've lost your health or when you've lost your job or when you've experienced uh, a great trial in your family, uh, all of a sudden the things that wealth gives don't matter anymore. Uh, they, can't, they can't make you happy in the midst of your trouble. Only God can do that. Now let's move on to verse 11. Uh, James here gives an illustration to the rich man of what's going to happen to him and really what's going to happen to all of us. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. And uh, this picture would have been very familiar to the people that James was writing to. Uh, people, Jews who were living in the land of Palestine, uh, in the spring, uh, the land would be covered with flowers and then uh, eventually the heat of summer would come hot, uh, just a blistering hot wind that just within a day or so would turn the grass brown and cause all the flowers to wilt and die. And that's a picture of what's going to happen to all of the things of this world that we're tempted to trust in. Uh, we're going to pass away. We're going to leave all these things behind. Someone has said uh, that uh, there, there are no uh, U-Hauls attached to uh, U-Haul trailers attached to hearses. When we die, we leave everything behind. So be careful. What are you trusting in? Are you trusting in what really matters or are you trusting in the things of this world? Uh, the verse Matthew 6.33 is coming to my mind as I think about this. Um, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, the things that the world looks for, food, clothing, shelter, all these things will be added unto you as well. Put God first, and he'll take care of all your needs. Now in verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. And this really needs to be where our focus is, focusing on the crown of life that we're going to receive from the hand of our Lord Jesus Christ if, if we've been faithful to him. Now, it's true. Uh, there are Christians who are going to stand before God and have nothing uh, because they did not seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. They set their desires on affections, on other things. They're going to be saved, as it were, by the skin of their teeth. They're still going to receive the crown of life, but there are going to be very few rewards for them. And Oh, uh, how I pray. I trust it's your heart that when you stand before the Lord, you want to receive not just eternal life, but great blessings, great favors, great rewards, because you've been faithful to the Lord in this life. You have served him. He's your master. He's your Lord. You've walked with him and you've sought to obey him. And God, or the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to reward us for that. Many parables that Jesus told speak of that, that uh, the servant who is faithful receives much, and the servant who is not faithful, even what he has, is taken away. Now the other thing that we should notice is that in this verse we pick up uh, where James started in verses 1 and 2 where he said, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So he says in verse 12, blessed is the man who remains steadfast. We not only need to start that way, brothers and sisters, but we need to finish. That's, we, need to, we need to run to win. Um, how sad it is that many who, who claim Jesus as their Savior and Lord are sitting on the sidelines or they're in the stands. They're not engaged. They're not in the battle. They're not... Uh, uh, serving Christ. They're not putting him first in their daily life. Uh, may that not be true of us. And if it has become true of you, oh, my prayer for you is that you'll pay heed to this and uh, remember, uh, start setting your hopes and your desires on what is in front of us. So 
Yes, we're going to experience some difficult trials in this life, but God's going to use those trials, as it says in verses 2, 3, and 4, to perfect us and complete us. And uh, we're going to be able to stand before the Lord someday. And, and brothers and sisters, he's going to reward us, not just for how we worked for him, but for being steadfast in the midst of trials, for, for enduring those trials, for doing so with gladness and joy because our hope has been in him. Oh, we have a great Savior, one whose hands are open with great rewards and blessings for those who put him first and walk with him. And, and you know, there are not just eternal rewards for people like that. There's temporal reward, rewards. Our Lord uh, strengthens us, encourage us, encourages us, and comes near to us in the midst of our troubles and trials in ways that uh, it, that, you know, we don't experience at other times. They're very, very precious, even though the, the times can be extremely difficult and trying. So uh, let's learn from this, brothers and sisters. Let's, um, you know, if you find yourself in a place of need, rejoice in what uh, the promises that, you, that have been given to you and the rewards that our Lord has if you remain faithful. If you have much, don't set your hearts upon them. And I think that could apply to all of us. We do have much compared to most of the rest of the world. Oh, may we not be found trusting in the things that we have. And then let's remain steadfast. Let's remember it is those who persevere to the end who are going to be saved. Let's be steadfast in our trials. Let's stand the test, the trials, the troubles, all of the problems that come to life that are a part of living in a sin-cursed world. Let's work our way through those with joy and trust and faithfulness, knowing that we're going to receive a crown of life. Trust that encourages you this day. Pray that the Lord will help you and enable you to do that. Well, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for its encouragement. Father, whether we're rich or poor, there's much that we can learn from this. Father, help us to remember that uh, we live here in North America amongst the top 20% of people in this world as far as wealth is concerned. Lord, guard and keep us. Help us, Lord, to be wise and diligent and not setting our hearts and our affections upon the things of this world. Father, so easy to do. And if that has begun to happen in any of us, Lord, open our minds. Give us grace to see it. And Lord, help us first to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Give us grace and strength to persevere in the midst of our trials, keeping always in our sights the crown of life that awaits those who faithfully and uh, uh, persistently walk with you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for watching. I pray that you will walk with the Lord this day in the joy and the gratitude that uh, he has saved us. He has a wonderful plan and a purpose for us, even in the midst of trouble and trial. We can rejoice and trust in our God. Well, may God help you, and may God sustain you throughout this day.